show. Gary. Gary Vaughn's here with us today. We're very delighted to have him back. Gary is a senior IT and knowledge management advisor currently working with the State Department and Buchanan and Edwards. He supports users and manages and designs intranet and enterprise collaboration in WordPress, blogging, content management, Diplopedia, I've never heard of that, it's a wiki, okay, thank you. Uh, he relies on timely, timely web analytics and reporting, web, WordPress systems administration best practices, media wiki categories and portals, and he applies relevant project management uh, skills, knowledge management, team building, and leadership capabilities in his work with the State Department. He's previously worked at Glowtech, maybe tell us more about that, um, as well as with the, the Peace Corps and for uh, projects with USAID. His graduate work is in computer systems administration <coughs> at Maryland, uh, along with an MBA from George Washington, and undergraduate and continued graduate work at Johns Hopkins. So please join me in welcome that. Well, thank you very much, Ken. It's great to be back at uh, at 40 plus and to talk about WordPress, which is uh, my passion. That would be one of the words I use to describe myself. Just hearing people's interests and backgrounds. I think only a few of you are in IT, most of you are not in the IT field, and a lot of uh, you, I think, also, just given the nature of 40 plus, are either in the job market or you're thinking of making a move, what your next step might be. Uh, so for both those groups, uh, including IT folks, WordPress can really be just a powerful tool. It's a, an exciting community, and uh, I think something that that you really find uh, you have a lot of uh, interest in. It, it, to amplify, thanks for the reading of my background, uh, I got into WordPress after working initially, uh, I was a project manager with AID for many years, and then got into IT contract work and knowledge management with State, and I started out with SharePoint, uh, and which is a more complex system, and after that, got more into open source tools like MediaWiki and WordPress. And I now, after working in WordPress for three or four years in user support, we help users inside the department do blogs and design them, I'm, I'm pretty much a convert as to what WordPress can do for us. So I think for all of your backgrounds and interests, uh, this is very, very relevant. Just a quick show of hands. How many folks already have a personal website? Okay. And then, how many have it in WordPress or something? Okay. So we have some some uh, experts, some other experts in the room here. Talking about WordPress. Um, so WordPress is dynamic. It's cool. It's fun. You meet lots of different people. I'm perhaps the outlier, having a suit and tie today. There's many. Uh, it really is a broad community. I'd say on the average, it's younger, but all ages, all backgrounds. Uh, there are meetups on a monthly basis in Arlington and Virginia and lots of places. There are work camp conferences. They're very, very energetic. It's a fun place to do, uh, do things and to learn things. Uh, and given the nature of open source software, it's very, very dynamic. There's always something new to learn. There are various ways to sort of get into this. Since this is a sort of a job search career organization, uh, Part of it is the IT field. So if you're either in the IT field uh, or on the margins of it, I'm hearing <coughs> folks are writers, they're in a strict strategy, communications, sort of marketing kinds of things. Um, you don't have to be a coder, developer, or a graphic artist to get involved, although those are hot fields. You can be an astute uh, user manager of uh, this technology. Or you can be a manager in an organization, whatever level. This is a platform. This is a tool to get the work done. Now, WordPress for years has been promoted as a blog. It's far beyond being a blog. It's a content management system. It does many of the things that a more difficult tool like SharePoint will do uh, in terms of presenting your data to the world, uh, which will be our focus here today. And, and also the focus will be on the administrator trying to put you in the driver's seat to actually do a website and we'll, we'll have some demos later on. So there's a variety of different ways to get into this as a tech field that's growing and get into it in various ways. 
uh, or as a tool that you can use as a manager or user and community member, it's open source. So that's why it's so much fun and so dynamic is uh, the tech people are contributing code, but there are user support people that are also making contributions. It's, it's a very dynamic place to be. So what is WordPress? This is our sort of presentation agenda. This is Wapu. This is a mascot for WordPress. Uh, it's an animal of some kind. Uh, the, here's the agenda. What is WordPress? Uh, why do you need a WordPress site when there are lots of social media stuff you can put, put your data on LinkedIn and everything else? Uh, what I'm going to propose here today, and I see one of you at least is using WordPress.com, there are two flavors of WordPress. Uh, the more complex uh, custom is called WordPress.org, which is a nonprofit. Uh, you have to have it hosted. WordPress.com is an all-in-one platform. To start, it's free, which is a great uh, advantage. And then you do pay as you get more features. Uh, but I'll sort of argue that WordPress.com is really a great starting point. Uh, and you can ultimately migrate to a more complex WordPress.org site later on. Design is important. The, uh, it's not just the mechanics of learning how to stand up a WordPress site, although that's important. You, uh, you have to get more of a handle on things like font and color, layout, uh, and I've got, we'll touch on that. We're gonna focus, I think, more on the mechanics of getting the thing up and running, uh, but we do have to get into design. The other feature of WordPress that we'll talk about is something called a theme, the various components of the WordPress basic software. A theme is a framework, so it will, a theme, and there are literally thousands of them, will get you started on a good design, but you're gonna to have to do some work yourself as well. And then toward the end, uh, the idea I think of 40 plus is sort of empowerment and getting people using the tool that can be a practical benefit. Uh, I'll go over briefly some broad tips to get you started, and I'll look at, I just arbitrarily picked three purpose areas, one being photographs, uh, a second being a personal blog, and a third being an organizational site. And I've kind of picked those as just sort of sample that some of you might fall into. You actually can do any kind of site, but those are some examples. And I'm gonna show you, I've gone ahead and picked these theme frameworks that might be appropriate for each type of blog. Uh, and then I will, uh, I'll show you sort of what some of the stuff looks like, and I'll actually demo how WordPress works, um, and uh, and so forth. So I open for a few weeks after the presentation to do. I do work full time at State Department for Buchanan and Edwards, but I'm I'm happy to do some informal coaching, email, maybe even some phone calls to sort of get people started. It's fairly simple to start. the 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 challenge is the learning curve on setting up the site, having it sort of look professionally. We're not after people winning an award for the best looking site or necessarily very artistic, but it's gotta kinda of look clean, professional, you can find information. And uh, so we'll get into all of that uh, during the session. And for those interested, Ken will take a name, take a list of names after the presentation of those who are interested. And I'll, I'll send you an email with some more tips and some guidance on how to reach this portal site on how to set up a WordPress.com site. Uh, what is WordPress itself? It's, I said it's it's powerful. It's very very popular. It's roughly 30 percent. Everything on the web uh, today is a WordPress site. Uh, it was mentioned earlier that some big organizations like Bloomberg and CNN, National Park Service, NASA, there are lots of big actors that are using WordPress as an external blogging or in some cases an internal content management. Uh, tool. By content management, I need a full-fledged website with all the different things that a, that a website can do. Uh, there's something called plugins and themes. There are literally thousands of these because WordPress is dynamic and growing and they're adding new code every day. Um, apart from the basic software to do a blog or a website, there are these additional features, sort of software packets that are being generated all the time to make the, the core software more powerful. 
The, the bigger packets are called plugins. So for example, it will enable you to do a survey of people. It will uh, give you something called a page builder, which you can put on top of a theme and play around more with the format and look and feel. Um, the, uh, the other category of thing, well, we've talked about themes. That's sort of the framework, the look and feel uh, of, and one of your decisions in standing up a site. You can stand up a WordPress.com site. Uh, my wife and I timed each other uh, over the weekend. It takes 10 to 15 minutes. The work is, the work is thinking ahead of time. What do you want to do? What's the content? and uh, some of the mechanics of well, which theme am I going to use and what kind of functionality, what kind of capability do I want to have. That, that takes a little bit more time and effort. Um, the WordPress is sort of modular in nature. That's why these plug-in kinds of things. There's something else called a widget, which is another uh, WordPress terminology, which is kind of the same idea. It's something that will enable you to represent information, pull information, in your site or from, from outside the site. It's evolved from being a simple blog to a content management system. So it's a full-fledged, uh, it's not SharePoint. SharePoint is even more powerful, but it does a lot of the things that SharePoint would do either inside or outside the organization. And it's, although it's a learning curve, it's a heck of a lot user-friendly. The effort is more to get the site stood up initially, kind of looking good, to maintain it, do posts and pages is, is very, very, very straightforward. And that's why it's grown so much. Uh, truth in advertising, I'm, I've drunk the Kool-Aid with WordPress, but there are other alternatives there. You can, and I have a link here. There are very simple site builders uh, that take very little uh, advanced uh, learning to use. Wix is one, uh, Squarespace is another, there's a whole raft of them. I have a link to sort of take you to them. You don't need help to do them, but it's like <coughs> like Facebook or like LinkedIn in the sense that it's a clo they're closed systems. So you're limited on what you can do. Once you're in it, uh, if you really want to do lots of different things, you have to maybe migrate to a different system like WordPress, which can be done the way. Um, but it does limit you. They tend to be simple. Uh, but depending on your, your circumstance, there, um, I'm a uh, craft beer and wine hobbyist. As a matter of fact, that's my WordPress.com site. And uh, so a lot of the wineries and breweries in the area, some of them do indeed have very simple Wix or similar uh, site builder sites. And that seems to do the job for them. But I would recommend uh, starting with a simple WordPress.com site, and then the, the virtue is that can really grow with you. You can do all kinds of things with it, interaction, there's a lot more capability and control that you just don't have with a simple uh, site builder. Well, it is an option depending on what your situation is. Uh, I've said WordPress is dynamic, uh, it has new version releases from the other quarter. Your timing is uh, good in that we're on the verge of a big new change called Gutenberg. Uh, that's going to change a lot of the look and feel. It'll introduce blocking, what's called blocking interface on how users interact with, with WordPress. Uh, but this is not gonna debut for at least another few months, late summer. Um, but it'll make WordPress, I think, even more powerful and more popular. And you can get involved at various levels uh, in the community. <clears throat> so why WordPress? Yes, sir. So if we're not in a hurry creating a site, does it just make sense to wait until that comes out? Or does it not matter? You can set it up and then when the new changes to it, That's a good question. I would say the latter. I'd say just jump in. Um, it's still going to be the same basic WordPress technology. The with like anything in software uh, or social media for that matter. There's always more to learn, there's always things are changing. So I would get in now, get something off basic, sort of get the feel for the technology. Um, I'll get in later. There are tons of resources because there's this broad community, the monthly meetups, there's something called Word Camps, which are excellent conferences that cost like 50 bucks. Uh, food included, can't beat it. Okay. Uh, there's one in Baltimore in November. They're planning to do one in uh, D.C. in July. 
uh, they have something called a happiness bar, in this WordPress uh, parliament, where they have uh, technical people. Uh, it's a, kind of a good mix of vendors who are, who are selling sort of WordPress services and hosting options, or uh, just hobbyists, which people are just into it. And these people volunteer to help you out. With any <coughs> like so short answer is I would say jump in now. Uh, and uh, let uh, Gutenberg, when it's introduced, will be in stages anyway. So it's not like, gee, I need to wait till September 1st. It's going to take a while to roll up. And I think the more you know about the basics of WordPress now, the better able you'll be able to pick up on the new technology uh, mutation. The, uh, the other thing is, it's <clears throat> we'll talk a lot about the mechanics of WordPress, but you have to have a plan and a purpose as to what you want to do with the website. So we'll get into this in a bit. Your first step is take out a piece of paper and kind of list what is the content you want to share. Why do I want a website? Um, it's, it does control your brand. Um, it, it, it's sort of a hub for for controlling your presence on the internet. That's why you need it in addition to social media. You can link, very much link to other uh, kinds of social media. But you have to kind of think ahead of time, why do I want to do this? Uh, how would it fit with the other technology I'm using as a professional on the web or through my organization? Uh, matter of fact, your own website is probably going to want to refer and have some content come in from those other ways. So do some work, sketch, outline, um, drafting first, and then kind of jump into the technology. We'll make it make it more productive thereafter. Uh, this is a uh, image I pulled from the Huffington Post. It's it's a few years old now, but it's it's true. Uh, you look at a lot of organizations uh, around town or ourselves. There's just this mess of, uh, of social media stuff that we have. And so one of the things that a good WordPress site can do is help you organize that, organize the links to it, and give kind of one, a one-stop shop uh, landing page for what you're about as an individual or as an organization. So why should you have a website? Well, there are a variety of, uh, as a user for a personal website, or possibly tied in with where you work. Uh, if you're a developer or a designer, it's a field that is using services like that. By developer, I mean these are the, the coding people, these are the real true techies. Designer, I'm, we're talking graphic arts, people who are more artistic, rendering fonts and colors and shapes and designs, logos, um, but they have to know something about WordPress. So depending on some of your backgrounds or colleagues, if you're kind of in the graphic arts, artistic, that could be a good gateway into getting into a field like this of WordPress. Managers can use it as a tool in a community member. Okay, first I mentioned business case. So here are some simple uh, uh, questions I'm getting going. Why do I want to do this? The audience, okay, that's critical. You're on the web, but who on the web? Uh, and you're also, uh, you need to promote your attendance. So this gets into the interactivity through email newsletters or talking at meetings like this. You're going to have to kind of promote your site, uh, but you have to kind of know who your audience is going to be. What is the content? When are you going to roll it out? Um, the While you can set up a WordPress.com site in 15 minutes, it's going to take you weeks, if not months, to really get this thing, the content there you want, do some testing, have colleagues look at it. So take your time. There's a difference between just throwing something up on the web and having something look professional with good content. Uh, and then the how. Uh, you, can, you can be the administrator for your uh, WordPress site, but you can designate others to have roles in posting and contributing to the website. Uh, you know what I said earlier, sit down, do an outline, do a sketch. Um, before you do a lot of tinkering with WordPress. It'll make the, the technology a lot, uh, a lot easier. Uh, WordPress.com is what I would, uh, I'm sort of proposing as a good entry level into WordPress. The difference, uh, WordPress.org, that's sort of the granddaddy. That's the, 
the nonprofit organization that has been uh, uh, initially founded and been promoting is this huge community of open source software. The core WordPress software itself is free, but you can't just download it on your computer. You need a server, and you need a server that is 24 hours, and so you need a hosting company with their server. So that's where at least some of the cost comes in for WordPress.org. Uh, you don't need to be a developer to have your own custom site, but you need to know a lot more. There's a, there's a lot more worrying, a learning curve. You can put anything on a WordPress.org site. So any plugin you want, any theme you want, uh, you can customize it, you can fine tune it. Um, so that's the attraction for it. WordPress.com is more limiting. Uh, they limit the number of themes, but it's still 300 plus themes or frameworks. They limit, uh, for a free site, you cannot download uh, plugins, but uh, WordPress.com has some built-in capability, something called Jetpack, which does basic site management uh, analytics uh, for you on your, on your website that's already built in. So they've kind of given you a jump start with one big plugin to help you uh, do your site. Question. Yeah. What does it mean to limit themes? How are you, how are you saying that? You said you well, themes are frameworks that you okay. need to get your start your site started. Okay. And there are literally thousands of them. Oh, okay. Uh, WordPress.com, because it's its company on its own, it, in essence, it's a host like many others. Uh, they're hosting their, their uh, instance of uh, WordPress technology. So they, they kind of govern what's going to come into their platform on the web. Okay. So in order to control it, they will uh, they only have 300 themes that they've kind of downloaded and made available. Okay. And there's, uh, at least for the cheaper plans, the, the, the best one being free, uh, you cannot download a plugin because they want to kind of control their environment and not have issues. Um, um, is the plugin the same as a widget? Similar, yeah. Okay. Plugin is, uh, again, it's kind of a larger function doing a survey, uh, more capability to fine tune your site, uh, doing something called Mail Poet, which is a newsletter uh, uh, capability. It adds ability to do things on your, on your website. A widget, as we'll see in a minute, is a much sort of smaller scale. I need a search bar. I need a search bar on my site. So there, it requires an action to find and move a search bar and put it on my site. Or I need, uh, I want to have the recent entries from my blog automatically appear. Well, there's a little widget that will, that will command the website to pull the data and do things. Yeah. So very similar. And, and those are available under certain packages on, work on, on the dot .com or you have to use dot .org? Well, good question. The, the, the number of themes are limited on WordPress.com, but those come with the, quote, widgets built in. So they come along with the, 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 uh, the, the theme that you can select. But if you need a separate widget, uh, you might need to switch to that word. Or you switch themes. Oh. See, there's, there's more variety. Although it's a limited platform, they've got 300 plus themes. So you switch themes, which are like packages of look and feel. Uh, I want to do one column, two column, three column. I want to have testimonials. I want to have a menu on a restaurant. So depending on the theme, and I'll get to this a bit, WordPress.com, I think has done an excellent job. They have a, a little search engine. Here are all our themes. Here's to find this one, that one. Here's one for photographs. Here's one for individual blogs. They really kind of help guide you uh, so and you you can very easily switch themes. So you can pick a theme framework for my site, uh, and you can switch it. And with it will come different bundles of capability. So the deciding what theme you want, at least initially, do some research work is part of your plan. Can you add an e-commerce um, page to the .com? You cannot for the free. That's one of the limitations um, for the free uh, version. There's some kind of workarounds to go outside on Shopify, and uh, but that's correct. That's one of the limitations of WordPress.com. 
You also get advertisements. You get their advertisements um, uh, for uh, for WordPress, WordPress.com. You can you can go up for just a few bucks a month. Uh, the personal plan I think is four or five bucks a month. Uh, that will eliminate the ads. It will give you more. Uh, although you don't have plugins, you get more capability with this Jetpack tool. So your your administrative dash dashboard capability to do stuff in WordPress goes up, uh, and you can even pay more money and get the capability to plug it. So there's kind of a flight path within WordPress.com. Once you, my advice is, uh, kick the tires with it on a free site. See if it does what you want to do. You can always upgrade. You can either upgrade within the WordPress.com platform. Or you can go from WordPress.com to WordPress.org. The other benefit and difference uh, to WordPress.com is they got their own support. So you, you don't have to worry about tech support. They're going to do it all. They're going to upgrade the system. Uh, it's got built-in security. Uh, in WordPress.org, you're responsible. So you have to go out and add and select specific additional technology plugins to guide to guard against spam, to have your security, to back up your system, uh, you're on the basically you're more on the hook. Yeah. Um, what about GDPR implications now on WordPress.com? Um, if you were to set up an email list now or a subscriber list, um, would that would that abide by any GDPR requirements? Is that licensing? Is no, GDPR is the general uh, regulation from Europe now that uh, implies all the email lists that you subscribe to, so you have to have an opt-in or opt-out option. Yeah. So I was just wondering if WordPress maybe has already created that in any of the themes that they have available. Uh, because, you know, everyone I'm sure got uh, recent notifications that we are GDPR compliant, blah, 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 and uh, so my question, I have a, a client right now, a nonprofit client, whose website is going to be updated, mm -hmm. and they're on WordPress, right. but they were not informed of any GDPR issues, so I was just wondering, is WordPress going to offer that or update that um, for, their, for their subscribers, both I, free I, or not? I can't speak specifically to GDPR, but I, I know that Mailpoint is one plugin, there are other plugins that that do um, uh, <coughs> newsletters, and typically they have the option, they'll give users the option to opt out. If you don't mind, can I yeah. give some insight? Is your client on the, dot .org? I think they are. Um, so it's the user's responsibility, that's where the privacy policy comes into play. The terms right, and that's what I'm concerned about. We're redoing it now, and it's on WordPress platform, so that was my question though, but even for myself, if I wanted to create a site. But the mail, the, the Email list plugins, they're not going to do it for you. It's going to be your your responsibility or your client's responsibility um, to have that information. To have the disclaimer. To have the disclaimer. Okay. I was just wondering if WordPress had some set language, because it's a website now that's coming up, if it would have any such language there available for people who are setting up new websites. It's a good it's a good question as to how you shape your content message going out. Copyright's another big issue. Uh, images. You should be mindful of copyright. Um, there are various sites. <clears throat> One is built in with images inside WordPress.com, but if you have your own .org site, there are various ways to get free, uh, free to use images on the web, but copyright is something else you have to be mindful of in terms of doing this. Um, WordPress concept, we kind of talked about some of this. Here's kind of a sum up. I divided it on sort of getting your content up and the functionality kind of do things on the site. Uh, your site dashboard, uh, as we'll see in a minute, you're, you're on, you have kind of your internal control area that's not visible to the user and that's where you manipulate the site, put content up and do things. <coughs> so what do you do? The, the, the uh, bread and butter of WordPress are uh, doing a post or doing a page? A post is what you think of as a blog post. Something that's chronological, it's changing, it's frequent. Pages are more static. Uh, a typical a page is about, about the site. Well, that information is not going to change a lot. So 
uh, WordPress has the capability to do these more static or more dynamic pages. Media, uh, this is not really a data repository. It's not like SharePoint or Drupal or some of these other bigger systems. Uh, media is where you're going to actually bring content into the system. It's typically manage it, uh, <coughs> images, but you can have a PDF for a Word document, uh, it, it sort of make an image out of it, and it will render. But it won't render as a Word doc or whatever. It'll sort of render as an image. So uh, WordPress does have that capability. Um, uh, the whole idea is to have users interact. So uh, there you can have discussions, you can have comments, uh, you can do surveys. WordPress.com has a simple survey capability called a poll that's built in. Um, and then, of course, the location, where is this stuff on the site? I mean, we all use websites. You want to be able to find it. So this is part of your planning process. That's why I mentioned doing an outline. Think of, you know, topic A, B, C, uh, subtopic, one, two, three, five, six, seven. How do you kind of want to lay out? Uh, do you have content ready to go into that area? The layout, uh, do you want to have sort of a typical full page home page? Do you want to have something on the side, in a sidebar? And of course, you want to link to other stuff. It's not. Um, WordPress should be something of a gateway to other information, whether you're an organization or an individual. Um, yeah. the, the functionality, we talked about plugins, themes, widgets. These are the things that will allow you to do things on the site. And then I sort of put at the bottom, WordPress.com has uh, site analytics built in. Uh, if you move up uh, and pay some money uh, within WordPress.com, they'll give you Google Analytics, which is a very powerful uh, tool we use at our organization, um, uh, or WordPress.org. That's one of the sort of flexibility you have. You can use Google Analytics from the, from the get -go. So. At least my suggestion is WordPress.com is a good place to start. If you have a little bit more tech ability, if you go to any of the Word, WordPress camp, uh, Word camps or meetups, uh, most folks will say, don't bother with .com, do .org, because you've got all this flexibility, all this power. Over the long run, it may be uh, cheaper for you, but there's just a bigger level of effort. So if you're brand new, my suggestion is start with .com and we work out. I have a question. So I've been thinking about doing something like this, and I have an idea for a <coughs> professional kind of life, but I also have an idea for mm -hmm. something I'm thinking about, you know, writing nonfiction, for example. Mm -hmm. Would I create a WordPress site that would include both of those, or would I create separate sites? Very good question. Uh, it depends. Mm -hmm. okay. So in general, if you have kind of related uh, interests, you, you want to strive for fewer sites, and if you can, one big site. So uh, an example might be that you, as let's say you're a photographer, so you want to have uh, all of your capability as a photographer, uh, a portfolio of all the shots you've taken, um, and uh, where you can be located, what your references are, all that sort of, what my resume is. And that's kind of website stuff, it's kind of more static. But in addition, uh, I am a uh, artistic photographer. And I'm traveling all around the world and I'm going to exhibitions and I'm picking up new ideas and I'm relating. I have lots of stories to tell, so I do have a blog. So that's kind of a good example. They're kind of related. Doing the blog as a photographer can be a facet of the WordPress site, uh, and the content uh, can be uh, on the same site. But uh, yeah, many times you're going to do different sites. So if and you, WordPress.com will allow that, when you log in, you'll see your different sites. There's no limitation. You don't want to go hog wild, but there's no limitation on creating uh, additional sites. So my circumstance, I have a blog on craft beer and wine. That's on my on WordPress.com site. The site I've done for this group um, to help people do WordPress.com sites is on there. Um, uh, so you can have kind of a family of different sites on the same WordPress.com login. So you can do it depending on what you need to do. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. 
Does the dot com site support uh, any kind of video, short form, for introductions, things like that? I'm sorry, video? A video, yeah. Uh, at a, you can embed video on the site at a higher level, sort of paying some money, uh, but again, it's not a, it's not meant to be a big data repository for big files. So put it on YouTube. You can put any link on this site, and you can. It can be a very user friendly front end to what you're trying to do with uh, video. For that matter, photos. We talked about uh, photo sites. Uh, you could put your your portfolio on, maybe you can do a better job in, in Pinterest or Instagram. Uh, you're a professional, you want a personal blog on your thought leadership, well, you're not going to abandon your LinkedIn account. That's kind of where maybe your, your resume might be, where you want to connect with people. So the WordPress site should be sort of a hub. It's something that, that pulls everything together and links other things. Uh, okay, we have an example here that I'll try to pull up of a website that I've done for this uh, group. If anyone's interested in uh, doing a WordPress.com site, I'm happy to kind of help out for a few weeks thereafter and, and do some informal uh, coaching on it. So. So what I tried to do is pull up a sort of a portal page to uh, the presentations on there, some tips are on there, um, and I talked about as a start, the problem is WordPress is just so much, so you don't need to come here, or anyone come here, you can just go on the web, but that's a problem, it's just, it's chaotic, it's just all over the place. And it's, uh, the content is sometimes dated, you, gee, can I trust the source? It's too much, it's too little, it's just all this. So I'm kind of experimenting with you folks here. My thought to, uh, to sort of get people started is to uh, try to do one of, just arbitrarily, one of three sites. And so I picked, uh, as a personal professional, uh, if you happen to be with an organization, what an organization might do, uh, or if you're a photographer, just kind of it's examples. And then what I've done is, and this, by the way, this is, I, I keep talking about theme, <coughs> themes, which are frameworks. This is done using a, a textbook theme, that's the name, that was free. But I had to kind of pick that. And I was thinking, well, it's textbook because educational institutions, they think it's useful for them. So I picked it and it was, it uh, has this highlighting feature that comes with the theme. Uh, it has the capability to put testimonials, which is what this is. Now it could be, a, this is on, uh, on WordPress, it could be testimonials from, from team members or clients who are talking about your work. And then it has this blocking feature, uh, feature of uh, blocking uh, posts on the home page. That's that's what that theme did for me. Um, it has you see the tags, tags. <coughs> another terminology WordPress. I, a lot of us I think know it. it's it's something's tagged so you can find it on a blog. And the category is a higher level. It's the same thing. It's a higher level category. Well, clicking on a tag, uh, so if I click on photo, it's gonna take me right to this photo uh, uh, page. It has, a, again, the theme has the summary lights up. And so the theme is doing that, I didn't do any. Uh, the, the other beauty about WordPress, either .com or, for the most part, there's no coding. It's all just, you're clicking, you're dragging and dropping. A little, knowledge of what are called short codes to do certain kinds of things. For the most part it's muscle memory on trying to learn how the how, how this is used. Yes sir. You used the word blocking. I'm not familiar with that word. And, and to be honest, I'm not familiar either. The <laughs> <laughs> this theme allows blocking. Uh, well blocking is a term of art for the new group bird and okay. I'm still okay. sort of learning myself. Okay. I meant it in an informal sense. It's just kind of structuring. And it's what I was referring to. 
Well, you're closely listening and catching mm -hmm. uh, It has this capability to, uh, on the home page, to do this kind of automatic format in these squares to render the information. And then what I've done for you is within each one is, and this is the meat and potatoes of WordPress, is, okay, if you want to do a photo site, uh, what are the steps? So what's the purpose? Uh, what content would you want to put up there? I also have links uh, in the presentation of well, other photographers, what have they done? That's also kind of common sense. I want to do a website in my field. Well, who else has done it on any platform? Um, and I've uh, some examples, ideas from other professional sites. And then the what I hope is helpful, I'll be interested in your feedback, is I'm saying, okay, if a photo site makes sense for you, uh, I suggest of the hundreds of themes available on WordPress, try these three free ones. I think they'll kind of help you do what you want to do. And if you want to spend a few bucks, you don't have to. Here's a premium theme, or a premium where you pay money, it'll do more things. It has more capability. And it's typically a one, once a year shot uh, fee, although this may be vary depending on who's selling the, uh, selling the thing. So that is uh, what I hope is a, a, a useful aspect of this site. This slide presentation is up here. Uh, I am asking people to evaluate. You're, you're having a paper evaluation here with 40 plus. <clears throat> so I put up a very simple poll. This is a built-in feature with WordPress. So this is something you may want to do. You want to interact with people in your audience and you can do polls of various sorts. Uh, and so this is a simple poll on getting the feedback from my, uh, my presentation. Uh, and then the, I have a contact form. Uh, I'm taking a risk here. I'm going to get lots of traffic from it. But if you need help with your WordPress site, fill out the form, and that goes to my email box. So that's an example of what you can do with your website. A contact form is very common. <coughs> it's built into WordPress.com. Uh, it's very simple. Here's what it looks like. Uh, this is default language from this test site. Uh, your name, uh, email, your own uh, web. I'm asking you for to put in your website that you're trying to build. What's the, what's the, the, the internet address and what problems do you have? Yes? Um, cool question to clarify. You mentioned earlier the copyright. So does WordPress have a, just, you can just do your own copyright on the site that you create, or do they have any other kind of disclaimer language or well, boiler, good, boilerplate? If you're just doing, using WordPress.org software, it's open source. There's no problem. But the themes uh, may have, uh, particularly the paid themes, may have uh, issues of your reusing or, or typically for for one individual's use, there's no problem. You pay your 50 bucks and you're done. But if you're going to reuse that and sell it, they may have secondary kind of rights as to you're paying more for that purpose. So it's a good question. Yeah. Okay. Using WordPress, can you use your, uh, your own URLs or do you have to use something in WordPress? Well, uh, that's a good question. This is part of your planning process. And matter of fact, uh, for those who really want to uh, jump in and do this, uh, I've got, uh, get, under getting you started, WordPress.com site setup tips. And one of them is, what do you want to call it? You have to think about this. And it's, uh, you can't talk, you call it anything because someone else has the domain name. So that will be taken care of for you. They will, I say, I want to, I want to do a travel blog. I want uh, travelusa. Uh, dot wordpress. You can't get, with a free site. You've got wordpress.com. So, if you can have what's called your own domain, which is your own uh, name of the site on the web, but you pay for it. If it's free, uh, it's your name. Dot wordpress.com. But that's not. I mean, I don't think this that's such a. Uh, such a, a, a big issue. In time, once you get sort of familiar with all this, 
it, it's worth the five bucks a month or whatever to get your own exclusive uh, domain name. So uh, uh, think of something that you want that's descriptive of what you're trying to do. Short is good, not long, uh, not difficult to understand. Um, and then th within the interface, <coughs> Uh, as part of the application process for WordPress.com. That's one of their, it's only like five questions. And one of the first questions, what do you want to call a site? And they'll have an automatic uh, uh, sort of filter that will say, oh, that's taken. Or, oh yeah, that's available. Now they're always trying to mark, upgrade you to the paid plan, or just ignore that. Um, but, uh, yeah, they'll kind of guide what's available. So naming your site is one of your big initials. The same, sorry, but for one follow-up, if, if you've got a site that say you got through Google or something else and you've got the URL, is that in WordPress or you have to use a WordPress? I don't know. I've, the, the WordPress site will be its own different unique name. So, now, I'll answer the question differently. I have a type pad blog, which was great 10 years ago, but it kind of outlived its use in one. I'm, craft beer and wine. So uh, several years ago, I made the decision, this is inflexible, I can't really do things on it, I have to get out of it. Um, so I migrated the site from TypePad, and I had its own URL. Uh, it had its own name on the web on TypePad. So I basically closed that site down, and I moved all of my content, I migrated it, which can be done. Uh, to the WordPress.com platform with a new, a new site domain. If, if you know, technical, but if domains are things you can get and sort of move around. If you have a domain from another area that you paid for, for another site, I think you can transfer that domain to WordPress. So it depends what your situation is. Okay. So that's kind of what a site looks like. Um, the uh, it's interactive. It uh, offers or should offer lots of uh, lots of good content. Uh, and we kind of went over briefly what some of the functionality is that's involved. With that. So I'll be interested in your feedback. Uh, Toward the end of the class, uh, the presentation today, I'll take names, people are interested in sending an email, I'll see um, uh, who would like this sort of ins instructive uh, email instructions on how to actually set up a site. Ken, how are we doing on time in terms of- Go flexible, another 15, 20 minutes, whatever you want, whatever you want to That's good, that's good. Um, I mentioned that Setting up the WordPress site is pretty simple as long as you get some things, you've made some key decisions. Why am I doing this? What's the basic content? And what's my name? Uh, another key thing to remember in the application process, don't screw up your email address. <laughs> it's happened. Uh, it's happened. So make sure you got your correct email address because they're gonna want to validate that for you to follow through with the, with the site. Mm -hmm. The other key decision, <coughs> because they will give you, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll provide this link, if the link on getting started is on this portal site I showed you, I'll give, also give it to you in, in, um, in the email, or also just go to wordpress.com, you can't avoid it, it's right there in the middle. It says get started. That's the button you look for to get, uh, get started in WordPress. Once you've set up the site, they will give you the thing. They'll give you the default theme. The few times I've tried it recently, it's been something called Independent Publisher Tool. They'll give you it. You can use that if that's going to work for you. But you're, you're kind of, uh, you're not taking advantage of the richness of what I can do for you. So my suggestion is do some research. Uh, there are literally hundreds of themes out there on WordPress.com. You can filter them free, or paid, or this format, or that format, or doing photography, doing personal blogging, um, uh, businesses, 
you, you can do all kinds of filters to find a good thing. So do a little bit more research as to what kind of a theme might be might be best for you. And I've made some suggestions in various areas. Question? Yeah. Um, I'm actually not sure if I have WordPress.org or WordPress.com because neither seems like it's what I have. But um, so where does Divi fit in? What is Divi? Divi's a theme. But it's more of a like Uber theme, right? Or no? Or it's just a regular theme. As I understand it, it's a regular theme. I think it is it. I think it's paid, or is it free? Yes. Okay. Uh, no. okay. I'm familiar with the name. Uh, yeah, it's a theme. It's a theme. Uh, <clears throat> so go through so this the theme your theme uh, decision is important. I would do it before I set up my site because you you can go to WordPress.com. You don't need to be a, have a site to use all their services. So this search engine on what all their themes are, and they've done, I think, a very, very good job. They, they show little layouts of them, um, and uh, they uh, will sort of a mini live demo. They do a real good job. So they'll help, they'll help you channel your thinking, kind of narrow it down. You can take my recommendations in these three fields, or you can do your own research, whatever makes sense. <clears throat> what I used for the site I showed you uh, to help you get started on WordPress is the textbook theme. Um, we may do the demo at, just in the interest of time. We can kind of come back to this. Uh, or do you want me to do a demo now of exactly how WordPress functions? Yes. Yeah. Would that be good? Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Seeing is believing. Okay, another WordPress site. The, this is, the name for this, by the way, is different from the slides. It's, it should be 40 plus demo free. Uh, I changed the, the URL and how this is done. The dashboard that you're gonna see, <clears throat> so this is, um, okay, that's the, or, when you uh, use this, you use the, the administ what's called the dashboard, which is this. Down the left, you have sort of commands to do different things. <coughs> and then the site itself is on the right. <coughs> when you actually do this, you'll be doing actions to, so for example, let's create a, uh, let's create a um, post. <coughs> I was sort of buried in the, the dashboard. This is the basic down the left. Your ability to do different things. By the way, one of the things you want to do settings is what it sounds like. It kind of sets up uh, the key attributes of the site or how it's going to be governed. Uh, one of the things you want to do. Uh, you can give yourself a site icon if you'd like. Privacy. When you throw up a site on the web, you don't have to share it with the world. So what I would advise is uh, actually two things. I would put two sites, do a test site, you're going to fool around with, and then do kind of the real site that you really want to kind of do. And then on really either of them, but particularly the real site that you're going to be sharing, I would mark it private first. So it's on the web, but only you can get to it. If it's hidden, it's accessible to anyone. So the, the portal, help portal on WordPress that I did for, for you folks is accessible, but it's not being tracked by search engines. Because I, I don't want that broad, uh, broad uh, uh, accessibility. And then public is the, uh, it's wide open, it's being searched by Google. And Sorry, I don't know if I understand what you mean by creating a test site and another site. I mean create two sites. Okay. So um, the it, it's it, I guess educational. Okay. So say you want to do a what kind of a WordPress site would you like to do? So I'd like to want do one that's sales focused. And then sales. Have, yes. Okay. So uh, I would I would have a WordPress site called sales, and then I have another site called 
practicing WordPress. Oh, I understand. Okay. It just fool around on WordPress, do post mm -hmm. two pages, okay. keep it private, just fool around. Okay. So you're not just muck up what, what you're trying to do with okay. your website. You. And you'll see both on your dashboard. So, mm -hmm. for example, this is my, it'll, I've got, uh, my wife has a site, I have another test site, Buffalo Bill 123, and then this demo site that we're looking at now. If, this is the handy thing, at WordPress.com you can create many sites, or you can create uh, more than one real site. Well, they're all on the same kind of dashboard. So if I want to I wanna go back <coughs> to manipulating what I'm doing on the, the 40 plus demo free site, uh, I just click on it and I can switch back and forth. Yes, sir. Um, you were mentioning with the choices about exposure, I guess, with the yeah. hidden. I don't understand what they hidden about why you, you don't want search engines to see. Well, you want to be, uh, well, one example is this class. I don't want necessarily uh, search engines and hundreds of people asking for WordPress site setup. I see. Okay. So I want it public so anybody can, can access it, but I don't want just the world finding out this tremendous free resource. I see. Okay. okay. But you also want to do this if, if in your shoes is, uh, People use the term launch, you know, formally launch. If those of you are in sales or advertising, you kind of launch a product. Well, the web is the same way. So kind of do your homework, get it set up, get the functionality working, get the right theme, get all that content. This is going to take a few weeks. or some, It's going to take some time. So I would uh, keep that, keep your site while you're, it's uh, under construction is to be the term, right? websites under construction. Keep it either private or hidden while you're doing that. And then it's like a, a new product release. When you're ready to have the world interact with your site, then, then make it public. Okay. Okay. Well, let's try a, a blog post. It's uh, the, for the free version, the dashboard on the left is simpler. If you upgrade, uh, and pay a few dollars, you'll get this jetpack. It'll get it more, uh, more detail. The dashboard has more capability. But to do a blog post, just click Add. Okay, it's basically a WYSIWYG. It's kind of like a Word document. It's it's similar functionality. So the first thing uh, we need is the title. And then the, the theme I've given for this, or theme, the, the subject matter for the test site is, uh, is travel. So it's this bar, this what's called a toolbar, as you would have on your PC or your Mac, is allows you to do as you would in a Word document, a Word processor, you can bold it, you can select a web link, uh, you can give it a different color. Okay. That's what all this capability is within the text of the post. And then I talked about Media Library. That has the capability to add a, uh, an image. So they have a free, this free photo library. They've got their own stock images uh, built into this, which is good to get started. Is, is fine. You don't want to overuse stock images. This gets into the sort of design elements. The more unique, the more creative is typically better. But stock Im images is a way to start. So it'll trip you over to this library. We want to talk about travel. Okay, we'll give you all these images. That looks good to me. I click on it. I insert it. It's done. Okay, and I add some more text. Okay, when you're, now the other uh, key aspect of WordPress is you want to categorize the information. You want to see people be able to find it. So 
I pre-established categories and tags. A general, so people can find information on the site and go to the place on the site where they're gonna find stuff about trips. So I put, I uh, assign the, uh, uh, the category feature on trips. So when I'm ready to do this, you can also do your, your posts in draft. Here we're just gonna sort of publish it. But you can also have them done in draft and keep them on the site and think about it and release it later. You can also release it on a schedule. Can you resize those photos? Yep. Fairly, fairly straightforward. One of the tricks in WordPress is you can't just take any old photo and just throw it on there. Sometimes the particular theme will have, well gee, we really only need images with this, this size in terms of pixels. So uh, there's some, there may be some work depending on the theme, uh, particularly the pictures in the header image, it may have some constraints on it. But uh, elsewhere on the, on the site, you do have this flexibility to just to move the image. Okay, when you're ready to go, We've got a title, we've got an image here, we've got some trial text, we publish it. And then it sort of gives you an opportunity to think about it, think about it, and then it's, it's um, okay. Visit the site. So that's our, that's the test post that we did for today. We go back to the home page then go to trips okay it pops up there and that was done that's another virtue of this categorizing or tagging information it's not just so a user can see a tag button and find stuff it en enables you to pull that information and put it somewhere on the site so that, that's kind of the basics of doing a, po a page is very similar, pages are static. Um, post pages are sort of the meat and potatoes of WordPress. And working between the dashboard, the back end where you're doing stuff, and, uh, and the view. Let me just take a few minutes and I'll kind of wrap up on uh, some other elements that might be, might be useful. And then I've, in the slides, I've summed up basically sort of what I did. The, for a simple site, it's fairly simple. You create the site, which is this 10 minute, whatever, the domain, whatever, get started off of WordPress.com. Step two is inform, meaning information, meaning content. You gotta have, this was a simple travel blog. I've got photos on traveling, I've got trip reports, I've got packing tips. So you need some content and start, start playing around with the content uh, and playing out around with the layout given the theme framework you have. So is it kind of render, is it showing the way I want to have it show, which is this format issue, format, layout, theme. And then review, meaning you're always, as I was doing, you're kind of making a change, you're kind of viewing, okay, did, did it happen? Uh, a common mistake is to not, many times you have to either click an update button or you have to click a publish button to get it on the, on the web. And many times you have to, uh, it has to be in the navigation, it has to be in the menu to appear. It doesn't just automatically appear. You have to kind of instruct the software where do you want to have it pop up. With the, the way I did the the category, the categorization of trips. So any blog article that I assigned trip to, uh, I set up that categorization earlier. When I did my new article uh, and I categorized it as trip, then it automatically appeared in the trip uh, uh, portion of the website. So those are what I think are some four steps to sort of do this, I've summarized them general settings we talked about. It kind of goes along with this test idea of a, of a uh, 
doing blogging. If, if it's a little bit more complex, I tried to sort of boil down what are sort of, sort of more steps that are involved, sketch, setup, theme, the layout, content, testing, launch, just a little bit more involved as it would be for an organization or your own site. And then design, we already talked a lot about design. Design, I mentioned earlier, our graphic designers, there are other people that might come sort of involved in this. Um, this is more from a design, a look and feel, a color, a font. Uh, we're not trying to earn a, uh, a web award for what we're doing, but we want to have it look professional, okay? We want to have it look sort of sharp, be easy to find the information. That's why picking the right theme framework is important. It will not do everything for you, but it will do a lot for you. It will make the colors kind of more or less go together. In some themes, it may give you a palette of colors to choose from. Um, it will do a layout for you. It may give you a choice of different layouts. Now, you, it all, you, you may also customize it and sort of make a mess out of it. But the theme will kind of give you some general framework. I'm not a graphics artist, but it will help kind of guide you to some sort of good, good, uh, good choices. So here's some theme. You can either do something called a mood board, uh, I think style sheets, the other kinds of tools like this. So instead of doing a site prototype, what's called a wireframe, you just forget about the internet. And you just kind of throw some stuff up on uh, various colors and messages and content and how to kind of things more or less go together, kind of a free form, uh, graphic, artistic. So as some of you who are more artistic so we want to get into this, you can go that extra step. But in, for most of us, a, a good theme with kind of good structure and good basic color and font selection will take care of a lot uh, of that work for us. We've got design best practices for, I think, all of us. Clean and simple, use white space, don't go crazy on the fonts or the colors. Navigation should be very clear. Uh, the content's critical. It's got to be engaging. It's got to be well written. Uh, pick good photos. Uh, there's some other work you can do. You can take, I am completing an excellent course, Coursera, it's an online course, on graphic arts. And I'm picking up useful things that are useful in web design. Uh, Lynda.com is another excellent resource. Lots of videos, tutorials on all kinds of IT, including uh, WordPress. You've got to keep it up. So I'll close with uh, for anyone who's interested, if you want to actually try a WordPress.com site, I'm happy to help. I showed you that portal, WP for professionals, you've got the URL. Um, the, you can do anything, but I'm suggesting, I'm kind of sure of trying to channel you, uh, pick one of these three. One is photo, the other is personal blog, and the other is for an organization. So if any of these fits for you, so uh, maybe photo is not, let's pick a personal blog. It's probably a lot of people in that category. Um, the first step, what are you trying to do? What's the content? And I kind of gave some suggestions. Toward the end of the deck, uh, well, I give some uh, just a website of people who've done personal uh, blogging to uh, sites. They're professionals, they're marketers, they're graphic artists, they're IT people, various fields. Just some examples. They're not on WordPress, but they just kind of give you an idea. And then you're going to have to kind of take those ideas and your content and put it within the WordPress structure and format. What you can. Uh, by varying themes, get a lot of different capability. You can even, what's called customize, I don't know if you saw a button. One of your buttons on the dashboard is you can, within a given theme's structure, choose different fonts, choose different colors. Uh, different themes have different capability in terms of how they can vary, how they can customize uh, what you want to do. So I'm making some suggestions of themes for personal blogs. Okay. Talked about themes, what themes can do. Here's an example. Um, the uh, color palettes. So you can fairly simply just toggle back and forth and have different color schemes under the Maxwell. Uh, that's a, that happens to be a paid uh, theme. Or you can do pull-up pull quotes. 
for the editor theme. So you've got a blog article, and then you want up, up, up front some italics for a key idea. Well, that's, that's kind of an automatic formatting thing. The editor theme will do that. It does other things, but that's just an example. An organization site. So for each of these areas, photo, personal blog, organization, um, I kind of start out with why are you doing, what's the content, I'm suggesting some themes. Anyone wants to do a restaurant? I have two great restaurant themes here. Um, and again, some examples of uh, what what a theme can do. It can do a menu for you uh, in the canapé theme, or it can do three columns in the organization. Yes, sir. Just a quick question about blogs. So, my limited understanding of blogs is like if you want to choose some place like Medium to run your blog rather than on your own WordPress site. So what do, what's, what's the advantage of doing it on WordPress? Good question. Depending on your field, you may want to use some, some overall hosting organization. Uh, it may be part of your strategy, but some of the wineries and breweries that I, I visit as a hobby do that. But it also has this limitation. So you're on there, if you're doing a site on their platform, it's just like with LinkedIn or Facebook or anything else, you're kind of on their platform. Uh, you get an automatic exposure uh, because, I'm not that familiar with Medium, but there may be a sector, a given sector or caters to a sector that you're involved with, and it may make your lawyer, your attorney, uh, or, or a consultant, you really want, may want to be on their platform. Uh, but the, you may want to do your WordPress site. I believe Medium and some of these other channels will help advertise and promote your site. So the, it's, it's not mutually exclusive. You may want to be on some other, either by promoting your blog in that other channel, or if that other channel requires you to use their software and their formula, it may be a, a LinkedIn is a perfect example. You may want to take advantage of it. But the, the, the virtue of this is your space. So some of you are marketing people. So you're, it's your branding. You're controlling everything. Um, even in WordPress.com, you're going to control the photos and the layout. You can switch themes. You've got a lot of freedom on it. So this is your space, your kind of hub that's going to relate to these other, these other areas. Yes? Can I, um, for the WordPress, um because WordPress was originally created for blogging. Um, and so it allows the capability to link to media or to link to blog loving. Um, so that you're kind of on all of those different media. So starting with WordPress will link you to all those other blogging media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Matter of fact, the, on the WordPress.com, it has a specific uh, widget which will you give you a blog role, an area on your site to link to other blogs that you choose. So it's, it's the thinking of this and how are you networking with the wider world? Uh, it's a good WordPress.org, if you really want to go for the more complex site, there are your options. Bluehost, Dreamhost, SiteGround are all recommended by WordPress.org. HostGator is one I've chosen myself. Um, 115 bucks for three years, not bad. Although I'm getting lots of spam. Because um, you need more care and feeding in terms of the security of the backup, uh, what you're going to do with the site. So optional homework and italics. If folks are interested, can you kind of offer to take, take names sure. and email addresses? Yeah, I think we're circulating the sign-in list. So if you make sure you're on that, and please make sure your name and email are legible. And here's some more references. And there's my content. So, appreciate it. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> On behalf of 40 Plus, just a little, oh. couple of tokens of our appreciation. We really do value your help. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, so quick pivot on the technology. So in addition to websites and blogging, uh, we all know that the world of technology includes apps today. So we are happy to share a book, the big book of apps, uh, sort of apps A to Z. Uh, so we're going to do this in a very arbitrary way. Who has a birthday in June that hasn't happened yet? Anybody? June birthdays that haven't happened yet? Okay. All right, we've got to go to July. Who has a birthday in July? 
Just one? Two decks? What, what day, sir? Five. Jai five decks? 27. Oh, here we are. We have a winner. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. And once again, please share your feedback on the little half sheet forms. Uh, we do a little drawing once a month for an Amazon gift card. That's an incentive. But really, we do value your feedback and need your help. Yes, Lynn? Where is the sign up sheet? I don't know. Sign up? So just make sure it's clear okay, and legible on the, on, the, on the side. Next week, we transition to a different type. Uh, in some ways, this is about communication, of course, digital communication, online communication. Next week, our speaker is going to be talking about face-to-face -face communication. Kevin Coleman with KMC Empowerment is going to be talking about getting beyond communicating and actually connecting in a networking environment with meeting people trying to advance your research. So please consider joining us uh, next week. Thank you all very much. Have a great day. Thank you. Please turn in your evaluation forms. Yes, please turn in your forms. And th those of you who are new, please step next door. And our friend Tom is going to tell you a little bit more about 40 plus. <laughs>